Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope you've had an amazing day so far. It's been an incredible time with family and friends. And I just want to tell you, thank you so much for taking the time to spend with us on this Christmas day. I pray that this will be a blessing to you. We're getting ready to go into a time of worship. And I just believe that you're going to be filled with joy as we worship together. And in just a little while, we'll go into our movie and we'll enjoy that and watching this final scene of A Christmas Carol, which is my favorite. I just love how it all gets wrapped up at the end. And then I'll come back and I'll just share a few biblical truths with you in connection to what we just watched to encourage our faith in this life that we get to live with the wonderful gift of Jesus Christ. Well, let me pray over you as we get ready to worship. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for my friends and family. Lord, I thank you, God, that you have blessed them. Lord, that your hand is upon them. And as we go into this time of worship, Lord, we want to make sure that we tell you thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. We love you. It's in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven in nature sing, and heaven in nature sing, and heaven, heaven,
guys, my name is Chelsea. What a beautiful day we get to celebrate the birth of our Savior. And what a wonderful Savior He is. I am so thankful for the gift of technology that allows us to celebrate Him all over the world today. 21 days of prayer and fasting starts January 8th. We kick off our year seeking God for wisdom and guidance as we enter this year. We've seen God do incredible miracles during these 21 days, and we couldn't be more excited to see what He has in store for 2023. Make plans to participate in this life-changing opportunity. Monday through Friday, we will meet here at the church at 7 a.m., and on Saturdays, we meet at 10 a.m. Be asking God what He wants you to step into this new year. Speaking of next steps, our Next Steps classes begin January 15th. Your next step is so important because it determines where you're going. So go ahead and make plans to attend. We are so excited to kick off our monthly men's and women's breakfast in January. These monthly gatherings are a great place to meet people and grow in your relationship with God together. Each month, you have an incredible chance to get plugged into a life group that meets on a weekly basis. God never intends for us to do life alone. We need Him and we need each other. So mark your calendars January 14th for the men and January 21st for the women. So if you got it, say you got it. All right, I pray that God has blessed you during our time of worship and he has filled you with joy and you're ready to dive into the message together. There are some great announcements there as to what's going on here at Central City Church and I pray that you get involved and allow God to make a difference in your life because the truth is he'll turn around and make a difference in somebody else's. Are you guys ready to dive into today's movie? Yeah, me too. It's going to be great. I'll come back up in just a moment, and I will share with you what God is showing us through this clip. But before we get started, you got your sodas in hand? All right, here we go. On the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three. What day? Hello, you there, boy. Me, sir? Yes, you, my good fellow. What day is today? Today? Why, well, it's Christmas Day, of course. Christmas Day. I haven't missed it. The spirits did it all in one night. Well, they can do anything they like. Of course they can. Um, hello, my fine fellow. Hello. Do you know the poulterers in the next street but one uh, on the corner? I should hope I did. Intelligent boy, remarkable boy. Uh, do you know if they've sold the prize turkey that was hanging there? What? The one as big as me? <laughs> Delightful boy. <laughs> Pleasure talking to you. <laughs> the one as big as you. It's hanging there now. Well, go and buy it. Yes, go and buy it and bring them round so that I may tell them where to deliver it. Come back with the man, I'll give you a shilling. Come back in less than five minutes, I'll give you half a crown. <laughs> Stress myself. So much to do. I don't want to lose any time. I, I, I was light as a feather. I'm as happy as an angel. <laughs> I'm as merry as a school one. I'm as giddy as a drunken man. <laughs> merry Christmas to everybody. And a happy new year to the world. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> 
This be a prank, boy. I'll box your ears. He was in that window. I swear it. Oh, uh, there you are. This boy here says you wish to purchase this turkey here. Yeah, it's quite right. Here's your half crown for a service well rendered. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Splendid boy. Now, there is an address and the price of the turkey. You'll take this fine bird to Bob Cratchit in Camden down. The directions are all written down. You leave immediately this very moment. Yes, sir. You'll say only that it comes from a friend. And it must be there in time for Christmas dinner. Mm. It will be, sir. Good fellow. Here's a little something for your trouble. Oh, thank you, sir. Ah, yeah. Not to offer you. Hmm? Thank you, sir. Merry Christmas. Wonderful day. Good morning. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Like angels. Yes, exactly. You sing excellently well here. Thank you, sir. Ah, I who thank you for that glorious music on this glorious Christmas day. <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. Oh, gentlemen, uh, good morning. Gentlemen. Merry Christmas to you. Mr. Scrooge. Yeah, that is my name. I fear it is not pleasant to you. Uh, allow me to beg your pardons, and please accept my pledge to the poor and needy for... Uh... Lord bless me. My dear Mr. Scrooge, are you quite uh, serious? If you please, and not a farthing less. There are a great many back payments uh, included in that, I assure you. <laughs> what can I say to such generosity? No, don't say anything. But, dear sir, <laughs> will you come and see me? We will. <laughs> oh, we will indeed. Um, I'm very much obliged. Thank you. Fifty times. Thank you. Thank Bless you. you. Bless Thank you. you. <laughs> the orphans of George make it right. Yes? Bob Cratchit? Yes? This is for you. Well, there must be some mistake. You are Bob Cratchit? Yes. Well, there ain't no mistake. I didn't order this. This here prize turkey was bought and paid for by a gentleman to be delivered to Bob Cratchit and family in time for Christmas dinner. What gentleman? What's his name? Anonymous. He wishes to remain anonymous. Anonymous, you said? That's what he said, an anonymous gentleman. Well, who could have sent it? I have no idea. Perhaps it's a mistake. That's what I thought. It's got our name and address on it, though. What should we do, then? I say we cook it and eat it and have the best Christmas feast we've ever had in our lives. And I say, Mrs. Cratchit, what a splendid idea. <laughs> and God bless us all, everyone. And God bless us all, everyone. Very good. Oh, Fred. Oh, it's much too expensive. But do you like it? Oh, I love it. Oh, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Well, then, it belongs upon your wrist, my darling. Merry Christmas. Oh, Fred, <laughs> I do love you. Uh, oh, and not just for this. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Can that be? Well, no one's expected this out. My God, it's Uncle Ebenezer. Your uncle? What in the world would he want? Open the door, Mary. I'm sure I don't know. Fred. Uncle Ebenezer. May I come in? Yes, come in. Please. Thank you. Do come in. Good afternoon, madam. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Oh, Uncle Ebenezer, this is my wife, Janet. Janet, this is Uncle Ebenezer. Uh, it's a pleasure. More like a surprise, wouldn't you say? Well, that too. <laughs> well, that's quite true. Uh, quite honestly, it is a surprise. When we spoke yesterday, you made it quite clear, it seemed to me, at least, that you had no intention of accepting my annual invitation. I made other things clear, too, didn't I, Fred? That Christmas was a humbug, a waste of time and money. 
false and commercial festival, devoutly to be ignored. Yes, basically that was it. Mm. Well, I come for three reasons. First, to beg your pardon for the things I said about Christmas. That was a humbug, friend. Was it? Mm. I didn't know it then, but I know it now. Secondly, I've come to meet your wife. Well, here she is. Yes. And a very beautiful woman she is, too. Thank you. I, uh... I was in love once. Would you believe that? Yes. That I possess neither the courage nor the optimism, perhaps the depth of feeling that you two have. Thirdly, if the invitation to dine with you today is still in force, I accept. Of course it's still in force. <laughs> Hurrah! <laughs> I was sure that one day... You were sure, were you? Well, apparently you were right. <laughs> yes, I should like to dine with you and your friends. You'll be more than welcome. Uh, you'll forgive me for saying this, but I see the shadow of my sister in your face. I loved your mother, friend. For a time there, I forgot just how much I loved her. Perhaps I chose to forget. Well, now, if it isn't too much trouble, I should like to sample some of that punch for Joseph affairs. Of course. You've made us both very happy, Uncle Ebenezer. Have I? Yes. God forgive me for the time I've wasted. Mr. Cratchit! Here, sir. Do you know what time it is? Yes, sir. What time is it? Eighteen minutes past the hour, sir. Eighteen and a half minutes past the hour. What do you mean? coming here at this time of day. I'm sorry, sir. I am behind my time. <laughs> yes, I think you are. Step this way, sir, if you will, please. It's only once a year, sir. It shall not be repeated. I was making rather merry yesterday. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you, my friend, I'm not going to stand for this any longer. Therefore, therefore, I am going to Double your salary. Double my salary, sir. Yes, <laughs> Bob. <laughs> A Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> I'll double your salary for a start, and I'll endeavor to assist your family in any way I can. And Tim. Tim will walk again and grow stronger and stronger upon my life, he will. <laughs> Well, we'll discuss the particulars this afternoon over a Christmas bowl. Hmm. Well, what's the matter with you? Nothing, sir. Well, it's just that... <laughs> Nothing. Thank you, sir. Well, my good fellow, we'll make up the fire before we freeze to death. Hmm? <laughs> Buy some more coal. Before you dot another eye, Bob Cratchit. Yes, sir.
Ebenezer Scrooge was better than his word. He became as good a friend, as good a master, as good a man as the old city knew. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. It was said of Ebenezer Scrooge that he knew how to keep Christmas well, if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of us, and all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, every one. Wow, what a great ending to a great story. We get to see Scrooge realize that he hasn't missed Christmas. I mean, I just love this. Here he is, all this build up, and he wakes up, and he's like, oh my goodness, have I missed it? And he comes to find out, I haven't. I haven't missed it. So it gives him the opportunity to be able to receive Christmas, but even more so the opportunity to be able to give Christmas. And I just wonder today, if that's possibly something that is happening in your life, I pray so, that you're realizing, you know what, it's not too late. It's not too late to receive Jesus, and praise God, it's not too late for the opportunity to even share Jesus with others. I hope this is happening for you today, and I just thought of this verse I came across, and I want to share it with you because it helps express both of these actions, the receiving and the giving. And let me read this to you out of John 13. It's actually Jesus' words and what he communicates to encourage us in this receiving and giving of this wonderful gift of Jesus Christ. He says this, a new command I give you, a new command I give you, something brand new I want you to go and do. He says, love one another. Wow, I mean, that's great news. Awesome. That's, That's incredible. That's something I'm supposed to give away. But Jesus then restates it again. But before he restates it, he tells them what it is that they've had the opportunity to be able to receive. Check out how this verse continues on. It says, as I have loved you, love one another. Jesus reminds us that he has made his love available to us to be able to receive. But it's not just for us to receive. It's for us to give. He's saying what you have received from me you should give to others for me. Just think about that. That's the life we're called to live. This is what Christmas really should be all about, is that we get to receive the love of Jesus Christ into our life as a wonderful gift, but then turn around and give that gift to others on his behalf as well. You see, when Scrooge woke up in that moment, he realized that the life that he had been given, one that really was full, He wasn't going to waste it. He was actually going to share it. He was going to share this life. His life had been made full, and he wanted to spend his life from this point forward helping others to have a full life. Matter of fact, it communicates that at the end of the movie where it says that he continued to do this. You know, there were these shepherds out in the field when Jesus was born. And it's an incredible story where you've got these guys out there. They're tending their flock. They're taking care of their sheep. And this angel appears. And comes to them and communicates with them about the Messiah. Now, they would have been aware of the story of the Messiah, the who would be coming one day, and I'm sure they anticipated him as well. But I want you to see what the angel communicates to these shepherds. It's so powerful. So the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I'm sure they probably probably a little startled. But he says, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Now listen to that, all the people. Now why would he say this to the shepherds? Well, you need to understand that the shepherds in this day and time, they were actually considered the lowliest in society. There really wasn't a lower ranking position inside of society than what the shepherds would have carried. And so when the angel speaks this to the shepherds, It's going to encourage them because the truth is, if you were to look at it, you can just call it their condition. They probably would have thought to themselves, wow, when this Messiah comes, he's going to come to those that are great, those that are mighty, those of that have got it together. And well, here we are. He won't be somebody for us. But the angel's letting them know. I just love the fact he came to the shepherd. Because here's the thing. 
Maybe you have a condition that makes you feel that you are the lowliest and least deserving because of your past or maybe even your present actions. But I want you to hear me. Please hear me in this. Just like the angel told the shepherds, he's for everyone, all people. So just like I needed to hear one time in my life when I knew that my actions really were not ones that were worthy. They weren't actions that were really what I would consider respectable before God. And I had a pastor encourage me and let me know, he loves you too. And he's for you. The gift of Jesus is for you. I just want you to know today, the wonderful gift of Jesus is for you as well. Well, this passage carries on. And I love what is communicated because in verse 17, just a few verses later, you realize that what they have received Now they turn and they give away. Check this out. After they had seen the child, and I can only imagine what that would have been like, they spread the message. They didn't keep it for themselves. They didn't look at it and go, oh, this is just for me. No, they received the gift, but then they spread the message they had received about him. So not only did they receive the good news, they shared it. They shared the good news. That's what we're called to do. We're called to receive the love of Jesus, the gift of Jesus, and then turn around and give that gift to others as well. But please hear me. Don't let Satan discourage you in this. If this hasn't been your life up until this point, don't let it be something that you go, ah, I can't believe I've missed out. It's too late for me. Well, I want you to hear what Scrooge says, and I want you to even Take it into your own life. Because here's what Scrooge communicates. When he's standing there with his nephew and his nephew's wife, he says, God, forgive me for the time I have wasted. You see, Scrooge had this moment of realization going, I'm not going to waste anymore. I'm not going to do that. God, forgive me. For us, that would be us going, God, I repent of my past and even my present. And I'm not going to waste this wonderful gift of Jesus any longer. No, I want to receive and live in and share with every single person this wonderful, amazing gift of Jesus. So just know this, God forgives you. God forgives you of the life that you lived in the past and the life you've lived in the present. Today's a brand new day. Jesus is a gift that just keeps on giving. And not only to you, but also through you to others. So today, if if you need, if this is where you are, I want to encourage you to receive the gift of Jesus. If you haven't done so before, there's no greater opportunity than on his birthday. I mean, I can only imagine the celebration in heaven when you make a decision to receive Jesus on a day that reflects his birthday, the day of his birth. And if you have received him as this gift, and this has been the life that you have and and you've taken him in, then I want to encourage you to share him. Come on, don't keep him for yourself. It's time to share him with others. It may happen through you sharing this video. It may happen through you sending it to somebody else and saying, hey, I just want you to watch this because maybe this will be a blessing to them and you want to share the love that you have received. Remember, this is the reason and why you're sharing is because here you are. You've received the love of Jesus. You've received this incredible hope of the future that you have. You've received this joy. You've received peace. Come on. You've got peace from your past. You have joy in the presence, and you have the assurance of hope as heaven is your home. Wow. Come on. Why why wouldn't we want to share that? What an incredible gift we get to give away. So here's what I want to encourage you in today. Here's what I want to encourage you in today. Take the time on this Christmas day and just reflect on Jesus. Think of the love that he has given you, this wonderful gift from our Heavenly Father. And then take and say, I want to share that with my friends and family and those that I have the opportunity to be around. Because this is what we're called to do every single day with our life. Just as Scrooge saw the goodness around him and he chose to reflect it with his life, We too should choose to reflect the goodness of God through our life because of the gift of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray for each and every single person right now. 
Father, that is watching this, that's been a part of this. Lord, I just pray that they know that the gift of Jesus has been made available to them and that they will receive him. But God, may that not be the end. May we take this wonderful gift that we have been given and share with every single person we come in contact with. May our life be about the love of Jesus to share with our family, to share with our friends, our colleagues, whomever it is, Lord, that you place in front of us. May we not try to keep Jesus for ourselves, but may we honor you by sharing the love of Jesus with everyone we come in contact with. All for your glory, and in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I love you guys so much. Have a Merry Christmas. There are a lot of exciting things coming up in the new year that we would love for you to be involved in. Next Sunday kicks off a brand new year, and I can't think of a better way to show God that He's first in our lives than to worship Him on the first day of the year. Hope to see you in person next Sunday, January 1st, 2023.